Professor Tak, uh, my name is Katarzyna Zasada. Uh, in the name of uh, Sequoia Company and my own, I would like to welcome you to Poland and thank you for your visit. Uh, Professor Tak, you are a, a microbiologist and you are from New Zealand, so it is not often that scientists from that part of the world visit Central Europe. So, uh, as we, we like to say in Poland, witamy, welcome. So we know that you have not been here for long, but how do you like Poland so far? Wonderful. I mean, I have it, it's been uh, wonderful, the visit so far, short, but, uh, but very nice. Uh, my wife and I have both enjoyed uh, exploring uh, parts of Warsaw. Uh, we have enjoyed the forest areas, the garden area, and uh, clearly people here have a lot of feeling for their heritage and it's very, very nice to see how much effort and what an expense actually has gone into recreating a lot of the old town. So lovely place to visit for, uh, for us and I'm sure it's a feature for tourists when they do come here. I'm glad to hear that. So you are the discoverer of a bacteria uh, Streptococcus salivarius K12 it's a probiotic strain in Poland uh, known as entities. So uh, could you explain us how did the idea of using this central strain in a recurrent tonsillitis came to you? Well, that was a long time ago. In fact, it was uh, almost exactly um, 50 years, a half a century. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in a class, a microbiology class, at Melbourne University because uh, I grew up in Melbourne, and one of the lecturers there was telling her class, and I was in her class, about her study leave. She had been to America and had learnt about microbial interference. Mm -hmm. And microbial interference is how bacteria fight other bacteria. You could think of it as germ warfare, in a way, how bacteria fight others to maintain their own population. Now, her interest was particularly in bacteria in the intestinal tract. And she told us about probiotics for the intestine, which had been in use for many, many years. And sitting there in the class, I thought, all of the probiotics that I've heard about so far are for the intestinal tract. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a probiotic that was specifically adapted to the human mouth, then that probiotic strain may be able to help counter infections in the oral cavity, infections like strep sore throat. So how does the strain work? What is the mechanism of action? Uh, strep salivarius K12 is effective in its action against streptiogenes because it produces something called bliss. Now, bliss is a name that I invented, I guess, for bacterial inhibitors, inhibitors produced by bacteria that target other closely related bacteria. Now, these bliss molecules are produced in nature by many bacteria, but what I was interested in was to find a bliss molecule that would be more particularly active against the bad streptococci, the ones that cause strep sore throats in humans. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us what patients may benefit from it and how uh, should it be taken? Uh, we've found uh, originally the interest, as I said, was in finding a way to protect against streptococcal sore throats. But in order to do that, you first of all have to get the probiotic strain to what we say colonize to actually set up a family of the probiotic bacteria in the human mouth. So the first step is to produce the probiotic K12 strain industrially and then to form it into tablets 
and then the consumer would suck on the tablet mm -hmm. or powder or some other form of delivery. The idea being then that some of those Streptococcus salivarius cells would bind to the human tongue. That's where they like to live, on the human tongue, and would set up a family there, would grow on the human tongue, and while they're growing there, they would produce the bliss molecule, uh, release it into the saliva, and saturate the saliva with the bliss so that any time a sensitive streptococcus came into the mouth, one that might cause sore throat, it would first of all have to survive, if you like, the pool of saliva containing the bliss molecules that could kill it, stop it from growing. So the whole process involves um, implanting or colonizing the human tongue with the probiotic and then allowing it to grow and produce its bliss molecules into saliva to provide, a, if you like, that prote protective uh, salivary fluid uh, that the bad streptococci would be killed in. And for how long it should be taken? To uh, there's different answers could be given to that. Uh, what I like to tell people is that at times when there are a lot of sore throats around, maybe in the winter months or at times when the person is going to be in contact with other others who may have sore throats, then you want to particularly uh, build up your own population of the K12 strep salivarius. So my answer is for school children, those going to what we call primary school in the early years of their education, often they are very vulnerable to streptococcal infections in the age range from about five to 12 years old. Those children could benefit from very regular dosing, perhaps one a day lozenge, but uh, especially in times of a lot of sore throats in the community or in the school ground. So um, my answer is, is a, little, um, a little varied. Depending upon the experience for that person, uh, you will take more or less. Uh, other considerations have to be taken, of course. Um, the, the expense of taking them uh, is always something that the consumer has to consider as well. But for good protection, to regularly take daily is the optimal. So normally, people who suffer from recurrent tonsillitis uh, shall receive uh, multiple courses of antibiotics. So uh, treatment with entities should reduce the need of such repetitive treatment. So how uh, would you speculate uh, what would be the impact of entities in preventing uh, antibiotic resistance and the cost benefits? Yes, well, any measure that reduces exposure to the classical antibiotics like the penicillins is going to be beneficial because not only will it save money, save the individual money because those antibiotics are very costly, but it, it saves really the whole community uh, from the buildup of antibiotic resistance, penicillin resistance. So the less that you have to use the classical antibiotics, the better, both from the point of view of the expense to the individual and from the point of view of avoiding buildup of antibiotic resistance because we're running out of antibiotics to use for treatment of some infections. So uh, the ones that we have, we have to protect as their use as best we can and one way to do that is to use microbial interference, to, to use the technique of having bacteria, good bacteria, fight off the bad bacteria so we don't have to resort to expensive, damaging antibiotics. So, but um, Streptococcus salivarius K12 is a bacterial strain. Mot moreover, it is Streptococcus, so it will generate questions about safety. So, is it safe? Uh, certainly, in our experience, it's very safe. I 
gave a lot of thought to this, which species of bacteria, from the point of view of developing a probiotic, would be safest to work with. Now, Streptococcus salivarius is found only in the human mouth. It has a history of not causing infections in humans. When you go to the scientific literature, there are very, very few reports of Streptococcus salivarius being able to cause infections. Uh, and it's only then in individuals who are extremely immunologically compromised can sometimes, uh, very occasional reports in the literature of that. So it's a very safe species of bacteria. It's very closely related to Streptococcus thermophilus, and you may know that that is a streptococcus which is used in yogurt manufacture. So uh, streptococcus salivarius is harmless. It lives on the human tongue. The only place in the universe, as far as I know, that it lives is on the human tongue. It's very happy there, and it doesn't want to hurt us, I'm sure. Okay. So um, do you know, uh, do, can you speculate how many patients have taken it already? Oh, by, by now there have been millions of doses given. I think the latest estimate was something like 100 million doses. So tens of thousands of people have used K-12. All age ranges, from the very elderly right down to newborn. We have powder formats used in New Zealand for toddlers. And there are no reports of any serious complications at all. So very many applications and no evidence of any toxicity for humans. A whole lot of toxicity studies were done before any humans were given the organism. So studies we did first of all in rats as an animal model. And then we did very exhaustive trials in humans of all different age ranges. So I'm quite comfortable with the fact that it's uh, a harmless organism, as harmless as you could find a bacterium. That's great. Uh, looking back from the origin of the idea till the success today, uh, what was uh, your major challenge that you have to overcome? I guess, um, I guess the major challenge was finding someone else to take with me on this journey who believed in it, someone who had money. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because developing an idea like this is not something that a mere scientist can do alone in the laboratory. A scientist can have the idea, but you then have to find other people to take with you on the journey of discovery. And I was fortunate to find um, an entrepreneur in Dunedin, New Zealand, where I live, who was very interested in the story that I told. The same story that I tell you, mm -hmm. I told this gentleman, his name, Howard Patterson, and he liked the story that I told. And he thought, well, this sounds like it might be the basis for formation of a biotech company. So I think the most difficult step <laughs> was not the science necessarily. The science for me was easy. The difficult step was finding someone else who would be a believer and who could make things happen mm -hmm. for the creation of a company dedicated to developing this probiotic. We're glad you have met. <laughs> so we know that the original strain was isolated from a little boy uh, over 30 years ago. So have you have a contact with this boy since that time? No, and, and in fact, that's quite deliberate. The, the studies um, with, uh, are always coded. The subjects are not identified by name. Once they are enrolled in the study, we keep it in a code form. And we thought it best not to break the codes and follow up the codes to, um, to find uh, I, I So I, I don't know what has happened to that particular subject um, over, the, over the years. But there are other strains now. There are very many um, 
many other people now have the benefit of um, having K12 now established as part of their own microbiota as a result of those studies we did uh, many years ago in Dunedin with young school children. Okay, that's great. And uh, once again, thank you for your visit. And uh, we hope that you will able to enjoy Warsaw. Well, we, s we certainly are enjoying Warsaw. And thank you for the invitation. And uh, I, I like to sometimes tell people at the end of a, a talk with them, I wish you well and may the bliss be forever with you. Thank you.